Welcome to the Prepped and Polished Podcast, the podcast that empowers you to take control of your education, featuring weekly interviews with influencers in the world of education, as well as tutoring tips, lessons, and updates. And now, here's your host, Alexis Avila. And welcome back to the Prepped and Polished Podcast. This is episode 130. Make sure to join the Prepped and Polished community. Find us on SoundCloud, Facebook, Twitter, Google+, Instagram, and YouTube. If you type Prepped and Polished, you'll find us there. Also, go to PreppedandPolished.com for more info and sign up for our free ACT essay course on the front page of our site, PreppedandPolished.com. You'll see the free ACT essay course. Have a question or reaction during or after the podcast? Submit your question to radio at PreppedandPolished.com. Let's get to today's guest. Today on episode 130, I'm talking to Naved Ruvi Kumar, the college statement guru. Naved took a pretty unique path to essay educator extraordinaire. Born and raised in Southern California, he became obsessed with movies, which led him to get a undergraduate in film studies at UCAL Santa Barbara, a master's from Chapman, master's in fine arts and film production. Today, Naved uses his creative writing talents to help thousands of students all over the world learn to tell their unique, engaging uh, narratives, college admissions narratives. Naved's admission statement philosophy is basically to tell a great story, involve the readers, get them to care, and he does a brilliant job at doing that. On today's episode, Naved will give you his best tips for writing an amazing, unique college admissions essay. For another related conversation, check out our podcast. It was episode number 72. It was with Ellie Swartz, the essay advisor, on how to start, write, and revise the college admissions essay. Now let's get right to our guest. This is episode number 130 with Naved Ruvi Kumar, the college statement guru. Naved, thanks for coming on the Prepped and Polished podcast. How are you today? I'm good. How are you doing, Alexis? Great. Can you share with the audience a little of your background and, and focus on some moments that led you to where you are today as really a, a highly regarded writing coach for students who need help with their admissions essays? Sure. Uh, first of all, thanks for having me on the podcast. Uh, so I had my background in in screenwriting and filmmaking. So I went to film school out here in the LA area. Um, and basically I was work. I had worked a series of, I guess you could call them content related jobs. Um, I was a, uh, I worked in a content role at Google for a few years. Uh, I was the newsletter editor for the Indian film festival of Los Angeles for a couple of years. And so throughout this time, I was always involved with writing and the written word and kind of, and people knew that I had the screenwriting background. So uh, I would say the first pivotal moment was when I would have colleagues and friends of mine who were applying to graduate programs, usually like medical school or master's programs, say, hey, I, you're a really good writer. Can you sit down with me and look at my essay? <laughs> my personal statement. And I had never, I had zero background in that kind of stuff at that point. But, you know, there was free meals involved. <laughs> and there, there was, there was, there was a kind of small sums of money involved at a certain point. So it kind of took off from there as like, I, you know, this, I started to build this track record of, even though I didn't know anything about this field or the subject matter, I was able to sit down with this draft and kind of talk them through some of the stuff and say like, well, I like this, this is working, Make, have you tried something like this? And so it kind of took off from there. So I would say that was the first pivotal moment. The second was actually kind of going from people I knew directly to people that I had never met before. A, a lot of times that was through referrals. So. Okay. I remember one person in particular who was living in the Bay Area who was a friend of a friend who still to this day I've never met. <laughs> and I, you know, it's like this, this friend of mine told her about me and it was like, hey, you should kind of work with this guy. And I t got on the phone and talked to her maybe three or four times and went over what I thought and gave my feedback. And she got into this program that she wanted to get into and that was kind of a big moment for me of you know it's one thing to work with somebody who's who's going to give you the benefit of the doubt cuz they've worked with you in some other capacity and you know 
they you have a work you have some kind of uh, like working knowledge of this person to kind of rely on to to be like hey why don't you talk about this interesting thing I know about you or something to go from that to somebody who you have absolutely no, know nothing about and kind of make that work uh, so that was a big one for me and then the third one was similarly going from somebody who is US based to international in this case it was India and so that felt like there was kind of a learning curve there because there's uh, kind of like a more of a cultural gap and uh, I was I'd never done an engineering applicant before and so that was that was tricky in the sense of you know I'm, I'm charging this person who has doesn't know anybody I know <laughs> in the world right. who found who found me on the internet who was like hey can you help me and so all of those experiences at the time felt very challenging and I felt a little in over my head but after kind of doing that a couple times uh, I sort of established that proficiency and that you know now I feel like I can work with anybody anywhere or helping them with any kind of essay related uh, assignment basically that's awesome um you talk a lot about movies you had a fascination at a early age I understand so I was wondering what's an example of a film that blew you away when you were younger, made an impression on you, where it was a story writing really that blew you away. Yeah, um, I was. Yeah, I was trying to let me think. So, I feel like it's very common when you go to movies and you don't really seek out sort of more innovative storytelling or innovative kinds of movies to just think you know what movies are or what movies can be and for me one of the first filmmakers that sort of blew my mind in the sense of what film what was possible with movies was Martin Scorsese and so uh, I kind of went back and discovered discovered all of these older films that he had done Uh, and like he has this track record of just doing these really incredible kind of risk-taking I mean he still does it like Wolf of Wall Street is a pretty risk-taking kind of movie right yeah um, but I think for me the one that like probably my favorite it's it's definitely in my top five movies of all time still is Goodfellas and it's you know there's a lot there's been a lot of gangster and mob movies but this one was like if this is if it was on TV now I would I would <laughs> stop everything and you know I would stop this interview You'd still watch it <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would watch the entire thing, and it's it's so like it's a very violent and dark movie about psychopaths, basically, and it's it's I think it's a hilarious, entertaining, and just incredible movie, and it's and it does some really interesting things, like it has the voiceover of the main character, but then you know thirty minutes into the movie, his you know, to be wife shows up in the movie and she gets her kind of a co voiceover for the remainder of the movie. Mm. It's like, you know, what movie does that kind of thing. Right. Uh, and it's just, um, it's like a two and a half hour movie that to me goes by in 30 minutes. You know, it feels so perfectly told. Let's talk about college admissions essays because obviously a lot of your background has been writing and story writing. Um, and for film, we have a master's in film. But how do you help students write, approach a college admissions essay where they're trying to, you're trying to help them write an amazing, you know, uh, Hollywood, quote unquote, Hollywood <laughs> blockbuster, you know, where admissions officers, you know, yeah. will be so intrigued, um, they, they can't, you know, keep their eyes off the paper. So, yeah, I mean, I don't know if there's a single magic way of doing that but I try to think of it in terms of you know like sort of the hero's journey it's like mm-hmm. like what is it about great movie characters that makes them so endearing and I think it's it's like a combination of they have great qualities yet they haven't figured it all out yet and uh, I, I think that's why uh, you know you can overdo this obviously but I am an advocate for college essays that are willing to kind of talk about failures or flaws or things that, you know, something that somebody, the, the applicant was having a problem with that they, they solved that problem or they achieved a resolution somewhere. And uh, a, a lot of times I think 
students get into this tendency of boasting and saying like, oh, I'm, I'm like the greatest thing ever and I started this club and I'm the greatest student and I started this nonprofit in my spare time. It's like, uh, you know, I think you can have that in the essay and that can really uh, sort of show, you know, the, the, the track record of success is great, but like nobody achieved anything of any value without some sense of struggle or difficulty or failure. And and risk taking, and I think you see that a lot in movies where you know it's like a movie in which everything goes right for the the main character at every step of the way would be an incredibly boring movie, right? Right. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, that goes a little that goes a little that logic you know, applies with admissions essays as well. Uh, you want a little bit of trial and error. You want some challenges. You want some introspection. And I think, I think if if you can capture a bit of that and before the happy ending, before the aha moments, before the before before the those great insights, uh, it it'll really make it'll really humanize the person. It'll make you it'll make the reader want to root for them, and it'll really kind of get the admissions officers on their side. Basically, that's awesome makes a lot of sense and that's why there's only so few great movies and a lot of exactly. mediocre ones <laughs> um, yeah the funny thing about movies is uh like you don't get an a for effort right it's like these hundreds of people on any movie spent over a year of their life on this one project yet somebody can go to a movie and be like i hate this movie <laughs> you know it's like there's <laughs> it can get dismissed outright it's just a waste of everybody's time in a bad movie <laughs> Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Now, can you just give us some some juicy, just a few uh, juicy tips for students when approaching uh, a college admissions essay? Yeah, I'll give uh, three ones okay. that I, 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 I do definitely use myself in my own writing, and I, uh, I, I really preach this stuff. So one is... Uh, I don't know if you're a Seinfeld fan at all, at all but you know there's that th- that whole there's an episode about where they say yada 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 to kind of gloss over a lot of information. Yes. It's like I I ha- I was hanging out with this guy yada 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 I woke up in jail or whatever. It's like <laughs> like well you know the yada 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 is, is it actually contains a lot of important information and that's the joke. I do feel like a lot of applicants have they're trying to say so much. And they're trying to cover all their bases in their essays or in their uh, Common App, for example. And the Common App is only – the main Common App essay, right, is only 650 words. Right. And that's not a lot of space. So I find that a lot of applicants, they will try to cover too much. And then they'll say, uh, like, there's here's five things that really help me become a mature student and become a better test taker or whatever. And then it's like they cover five things like summer camp, um, my teacher who is super inspirational and my, my, uh, my flute teacher or whatever. And uh, like to me that's I, – I actually use the term fast forwarding uh, which is kind of like you're taking a lot of important pivotal stuff. Like each one of those could be their own essay yet – in giving us all all five of those things, you're sort of giving us none of those things. And I really find that taking a step back and saying, you know, what is the most relevant or what is the wh- what had the biggest impact on me and really delving into that one those one or two things allows the student to give the richness of that experience and really express that impact that it had on them. And I think that's a it's a it's a much better approach because it's going to be more visual. It's going to really take us into their world better than trying to cover all their bases. Oh, okay. So that's the the fast forwarding point. A uh, second one, which I really don't hear much about this, but I, I think this really works for me. I've always used this for any kind of writing that I've done is creating a really interesting dynamic kind of name for your essay. And to me, this is like the uh, it's like the roadmap that's always at the top of your essay. It's like this is th- this is the essay that's named this, so it it has to kind of play by that play by the rules set forth or what is kind of evoked with that name. Okay. And so you don't necessarily have to submit it with the title still there, 
it, a lot of it is just for your own mental kind of how do you stay on track? How do you keep focused? Mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't I don't want the I don't necessarily want the title to lock you into a specific. Uh, like I mean, you should still have the creative juices flowing and right. don't feel locked into something. That's why a title is so great because it can, it's it's only you know several words, uh, but it can still be that sort of give you that roadmap. And so you know, feel free to delete that title at the end. But just for your own reference, I do recommend trying to think of something that's clever or something that's you know puns are great for this kind of thing. Okay. <laughs> uh, and I think. I, I I really like that. And a third thing I would say is, uh, it's it's something I call force retype. Force retype, which is basically after you have a early draft or a rough draft, instead of going through and just adjusting things, start a new document because you don't want to you don't want to mess with your original document, right? Right. Um, so so, save a new draft. Yeah. So I will above the old draft. I will. Create an. I, I will switch to a new font, and I'll usually make it a bigger and a fun font. And then I will literally retype everything from the original essay, uh, but I'll also make edits as I'm doing it. So as as you're going through it and you're typing it, mm -hmm. it it kind of forces you to rethink everything that you wrote the first time around. And so it's it's called forced retype for that reason. And you basically uh, you're you're typing, you're typing. And you're like, oh, do I need that sentence? I, I kind of said something similar back there. It instead of doing a surface edit where you're you're basically saying, oh yeah, that looks pretty good. That paragraph looks pretty good. It kind of it makes you rethink everything, okay. and it it makes you sort of be economical because you are have to confront it in a unique way basically so you probably have people who who might counter and say well are you making me rewrite this whole essay but that's not exactly the point here it's you, i mean there's going to be stuff that you keep but yeah there's some things that you will type again verbatim yeah okay but i the process does i think help you think about like is this the really the best way to say this it's like oh maybe i can combine these two sentences or uh, actually, now that I look at it again, this paragraph is not so important. Or, you know, it, it gives you a lot of editorial control, mm -hmm. and it gives you a different perspective. And it's it's sort of like a, a very, you know, it's, it's very intuitive in its own way. But it's a, it's something that, you know, I feel like I've sort of invented. I think. <laughs> and, that's, no, that's really cool. Actually, yeah. I, and actually, I kind of I kind of kind of see how, how it's done. That's, yeah, that's innovative. I, I haven't thought of that, and, but it will force you to create a better, ultimate, better essay. Yeah, and so what I will do is after I've kind of completed a certain section, I will delete the old version. So, oh, okay. at the, at, or the that old paragraph. So you kind of work as you work your way through your that essay. You have these little quick wins, sort of like, oh, I, I finished that s, I finished that paragraph. So let me delete that from – that's why you need to resave it basically. <laughs> so I'll delete that paragraph or – you know. and so at the end, you, you have this brand new version of the essay in a new font. Then you can change the font or whatever. Awesome. Yeah. So, ju so just to quickly recap the three tips for students when approaching the essay, one is to fast forward. Or not to fast forward. I mean it's, it's not to fast <laughs> yeah. forward but to, to, visual, to help the reader visualize his story. Yeah, to 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 basically take their time to develop the very important concepts and the important experiences versus trying to cram a lot in there. Yeah, and two is you know create a dynamic name for your essay, uh, like kind of like just a a, a, a title, a, a rally, it's something that you can rally around. You don't have to keep it at the end, but just is that what? You're... Yeah, it's almost like. If you were to start a band, I feel like coming up with that awesome, perfect band name will give you some musical direction as well. It's a little like that, where you know your sound informs the the name, but then the name can also inform the sound. So uh, the the titling the essay, I think, is a good way to create like a focal point of like this is what this essay is going to be about. This is kind of uh, this is kind of what I have in mind in terms of the scope of the essay. And once I put this up here, it's going to keep me in check a little bit. Awesome. And and then again, the force retype. Um, awesome idea about 
just keeping your you know keeping the draft below you so you can kind of constantly look at it and just kind of go through it and retype each line um some stuff stuff you'll keep but it will force you to kind of rethink things better ideas yeah it's basically in a forcing yourself to be more objective i think and it's taking yourself out of the writer's mindset and more into the editorial mindset that's sweet um what are some a couple of things that come to your mind for like students when they uh, how they approach the essay when they approach the essay wrong? Yeah, uh, I notice this a lot with undergrad applicants where they will. There's a lot. A lot of times, this college will make them write several essays for the same college, and I notice a lot of redundancies where there's you know their their favorite hobby or activity or extracurricular. They kind of, that's their go-to thing. So they might repeat themselves in different essays to that same university. Okay. And so I feel like that's, that's a missed opportunity to talk about something totally different and random and interesting, whereas they kind of tend to just default to, oh, I like this, I like to do this, which I already talked about. <laughs> so right, right. I, I think, you know, use every inch of space you can to reveal some other dimension or some other aspect of your personality or your education or your upbringing or whatever. Uh, so I think that's definitely a trap I fall. I see a lot of people fall into. Uh, I already talked about the trying to cram too much into, uh, into one essay. Um, I think, you know, I feel like there's not that much risk taking and the best essays have some element of I'm going to do something different. I'm going to, uh, you know, I'm just do something creative. Uh, you, again, you have to do what you're comfortable with. And if you're really not comfortable as a writer, it's going to be harder to write a letter to your future self or something. You know, it's like there are these great examples of these essays that are really out of the box and really innovative. But you, you, you like if you don't really feel comfortable with your writing skills. I'm not asking to you for you to go totally off the wall here, but go go a little out of your comfort zone and and tr and try some things and uh, worst case scenario is you throw it out and do something else, right? It's like uh, at least get, allow yourself the space to experiment and have a little fun with it and that is one of my sort of rules it's like if you can find a way to have fun writing it it's going to be fun and engaging for people to read uh but a lot of times people never get to that flow state where it go, you know it never crosses over from being a chore to being like wow i really enjoy expressing myself and i enjoy exploring these things and being introspective in a way that i normally am not able to or don't think about and like really to get to that state requires a little bit of discipline and a little bit of I have to kind of make time for this to make it something that I care about. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So Tufts University and some other colleges across the U.S. allow YouTube video, mini YouTube video documentaries where, where you can you know add to your supplemental, you can film a YouTube video of your life. If that's an available option, would you take it? Back to my previous responses, you have to play to your strengths, right? Yeah. Um, and for somebody like me who's very comfortable with a written word, I would choose the essay 10 times out of 10. But, you know, there's people like YouTube. There's a lot of these very YouTube savvy people out there. <laughs> oh, know, I thought that was you because you <laughs> are a screenwriter. So I guess I automatically assume you'd be all over that. But now that I think about it, <laughs> no. screenwriting, it's not. <laughs> uh, I've, I've created two YouTube videos all right. <laughs> for what it's worth. I've created two YouTube videos for my site and 50 blog posts. <laughs> oh, well, there you go. So, yeah. <laughs> so I would say, um, Different people are going to have different strengths and weaknesses and things that they're more comfortable with. And some people are going to be scared to death of appearing on camera for their, for their admissions essay. Some people are going to be like, sign me up, right? And yeah. a lot of those people that are comfortable speaking on camera are also going to not be so comfortable writing it out. Mm. So I, I would say you have to really evaluate what your strengths and weakness are, weaknesses are and know yourself and kind of act accordingly. Um, 
but you know, it's if you really feel like you're kind of equal on both fronts, the visual can really engage somebody and get them excited about you in in a way that writing maybe can't, to be honest. Right. Give us a, a success story and how like maybe a student came to you with a uh, you know, like something out of like Ace Ventura Pet Detective, you know, <laughs> and then you basically turned it around and made it Fargo. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Um, the one that comes to mind, which is a relatively recent one, is uh, the student was interested in law, like going to law school, right? Yep. And she had this background as a, she was Afghani American. And she, in the sort of the aftermath of the, you know, September 11th and the Iraq and Afghanistan wars, um, I had no idea that the military was doing this kind of stuff, but mm -hmm. they actually create simulated Afghan villages in some parts of America, <laughs> like on these military bases. Wow. And they needed basically people who looked Afghani and stuff to inhabit these totally constructed villages. Uh, and then it's like they would do these sort of military exercises where it's like, this is, we're going to basically recreate this village where we think bin Laden is hanging out and we needed to look ex as accurate as possible. And, and then they'll have these tanks rolling through the village. And then, you know, if they get shot, or, you know, quote-unquote shot, they have to sort of play dead for the rest of the simulation kind of a thing. Wow. Uh, so she sent, I get this draft, which is, like, I never heard anything like it, and I was just really blown away that, you know, there's somebody who was this young person in college who kind of gets this, you know, usually when, you're, when you have a college job, it's like working at the local convenience store or working at a video store or whatever. <laughs> she's, like, she's like in this military base, basically getting like mowed down by a tank or something. <laughs> this is not going to be a boring essay. No. And the thing is, you know, when you, as a, as a essay tutor, when you read something like that, you're just like, Oh my gosh, this is, has the potential to be an all time great essay. Right. But the thing is, you also have to tie it to the larger point. You can't just say, I had this awesome experience. that's one of a kind. And let, let me tell you about it. You have to be like, I had this awesome experience that's one of a kind, and this is the aspect of it that makes me want to become a lawyer or something. And that, that was, I mean, she had come up with all of this stuff herself in terms of the story of this village and how she got recruited for it and how, you know, people in her community felt like she was kind of going against their culture and all this, like, like all sorts of stuff like right. it was just all, like really complex nuanced interesting stuff like I told her like you should write an actual book about this um, uh, so the trick for an admissions essay is like how do you take that and spin it into and, and this is why I want to be a lawyer and right. so you know it, it, it's like we ha we spent some time like really talking about it like well, like well how do we get from point A to point B here and then we kind of, the way we cracked it was basically, it was about feeling empathetic for people who didn't have rights or had their rights taken away. And by basically role playing in this way, she was able to, to connect with these, to these people that, you know, like talk about no rights, like a woman in Afghanistan, right? It's like, <laughs> uh, it, it's like, it's really among the least rights anybody could have in the world. And like for her to come from this very privileged kind of westernized background in, in the United States to sort of play this role, it kind of gave her this empathy to um, in, in a way kind of like to sort of empathize, sympathize yeah, with, like uh... to sort of walk in this person's shoes or these people's shoes and to kind of appreciate the inequality that, that exists and to sort of oh, feel inspired to be an perfect. advocate. There's the bridge. Be, yeah, exactly. So once we kind of cracked that, it, you know, we, I knew I had such great material to work with, but it was really a matter of, like you said, making that bridge to how does that connect to what she wants to do for her career. Perfect. Wow, that's that's huge. That was a great, um, 
great turnaround. But she came to you with you know some some good stuff and. Yeah, she had a lot of the things in place because I knew I, I think she knew that she was working with a lot of great material. It was just a matter of, of finding that missing link there. Definitely. All and, right. yeah. Sorry, and to me that's the most satisfying. Like I'm not I don't want to sort of impose some kind of structure or vision in, onto the essay. I want to help students kind of find get the, have those breakthroughs and have those moments of Oh, like I can, I see how all of this links to what I want to do or it's a lot of it is like, I, I, I was sort of in secret or like latently thinking of this. I just didn't know how to articulate it or I didn't understand why I wanted to do certain things. But now that it's articulated sort of in this way, I have a lot of clarity about what I'm all about. Yes. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. That's the best way to do it. Yeah. Um, are supplemental essays uh, as like as Im- important, or are those just like appetizers? You know. <laughs> uh, so you only have limited time, especially these busy high schoolers these days with all their activities and whatnot. Uh, so I do recommend prioritizing Common App essay, the Common App essay, or the ones that you know you can be reused in different ways. Uh, I would say really think about those essays that you can use a version of a, of for a dozen different schools and, you know, really putting that your best foot forward in that way. But also think about, you know, what schools do you really want to go to and what, like, you know, you should definitely prioritize those. So secondary essays, a lot of times that'll be, why do you want to go to this school? So, you know, if it's, if you, if it's your dream school, you know, I definitely advocate for spending a ton of time on that one. But if it's your safety school, maybe you want to take that one, that why you want to essay for your dream school and change some words around or something. Sure. Perfect. <laughs> I've uh, had I've had uh, clients who they they would write uh, why I want to go to whatever school, and they never visited the school, but they would watch some videos about it, <laughs> like kind of act like, oh yeah, I really had a great time on the ca- the campus tour, and I was wandering around yeah. this library. <laughs> it's like. Uh, you can sort of try to sell some of the. I'm not. I'm not advocating for that. <laughs> right, right. It's but just, uh, you, it, you can really try to sell people on how you want to really go to whatever university. But it almost helps if you really meant it in the first place. If you write that about your dream school first. Um, so a, a lot of it is just prioritization, and it's just natural to want to and to go forward with kind of taking the one that's going to have the most exposure and really putting everything into that initially. Yeah. Good call. Um, and now what, you know, what do you love best about what you do? Um, you know, it's really comes back to those human interactions and, you know, really connecting with people that I would have normally never interacted with. So I, I do get, emails and phone calls from around the world. Uh, I do have a pretty good presence in South Asia, like India, Bangladesh, Pakistan. Uh, And so it's, there's nothing to be more interesting or exciting than getting this email from some far flung part of the world. Sometimes I have to look it up on a map. Like I've never heard of it kind of a thing. Um, I have like one of my clients that she's come to me for half a dozen different things uh, is from Azerbaijan, <laughs> and I. Yeah, I that's know, a small country. <laughs> I've never interacted with anybody from Azerbaijan, but like you know, it's it's awesome. You know, it's like uh, we t- last time we she hired me for something. We spent an hour and a half off topic talking about different geopolitical issues and <laughs> all these wow. things. And to to get uh, that perspective is very valuable, and I, I really value those interactions. Uh, and I, tr- I'm pretty informal about the way I do things. So, uh, you know, I, I really like to connect with my clients and to kind of uh, build a rapport. So I do end up being friends with the vast majority of them. So yeah. it's kind of it's kind of cool to build your social network and your circle of friends through being able to kind of you know basically I get paid to make friends in a way. I feel <laughs> <laughs> that's a good job. Yeah. Um, and what kinds of cool stuff are you up to now in the near future? 
Uh, yeah, I mean, part of my challenge is there's only one of me, but I, I do feel like I have a lot of wisdom and a lot of experience that I have to give to applicants. Um, so I've really tried to focus on um, kind of finding different ways where I can con connect with people. Uh, so uh, a, a little over a year ago, I published like a, a book, I guess self-published a book, 50 Questions for Your Admissions Essay Draft, that, which is available on Amazon and paperback and Kindle. Uh, nice. So like that was my first kind of way to create a product and sort of see like, well, like, you know, if somebody, maybe they can't, uh, they they can't. I'm too busy for in terms of for them to book me at that moment, or they maybe can't afford my quote. You know, they can spend ten bucks or whatever it is to to at least get some version of my knowledge, and you know, hopefully that helps them. You know, I've had people who buy my book and then they still hire me because they, you know, they like what they like the process of going through the book, but they still want to get their essay to the next level. So. Um, like the that was really my first introduction into that world of writing books for sale or you know and uh, I'm working on another ebook now so I hope to finish that in a couple months so that'll kind of be my next thing uh, I do have a video course in mind but I've had it in mind for a while so I've gotten as far as is buying the domain for it, so. Oh, there you go. That's <laughs> yeah, step one. Th that is an important step, but you know. <laughs> Perfect. Um, and how do we get in touch with you, Naved? Um, work with you. Yeah. So, my email address is contact at statementguru dot com, mm -hmm. and you can co you can connect with me through that, or you can go to my website, which is statementguru.com s-t-a-t-e-m-e-n-t g-u-r-e sorry g-u-r-u dot com statementguru uh, and I, there is a, a contact form that you can find through that site perfect and um, we got a lot of teenage listeners they're listening because they're they're off to college they're off to an exciting time adult, young adulthood and they're looking up to you so I was wondering if you can give us any words of wisdom yeah, sure. Uh, I, th I think that it's a lot of people, you know, have this very strong idea of what they want to do, but it's still, you know, before going to college, a lot of that is subject to change. A lot of my friends and myself who had this very strong idea of what we wanted to do career wise uh, were, had that changed throughout in in the process of going to college or even after college mm -hmm. um, like you know one of my close friends did a, you know went to school for English and then he did a master's in English and then he ended up doing a post back and going to medical school you know it's like it's it's hard to predict where you know college is such a you know huge learning experience and you learn so much about yourself and the world so I would say it's great to kind of have an idea of where what you want to do or w what your long-term goals are, but you know don't be afraid of rethinking some of those things and being ab adaptive and sort of being open to the world and what the world has to offer. Because I do think a lot of people are coming from a high school that's very maybe you know the, you only interact with the people that are from that area before and then to go to a university that might be in a bigger city or in another part of the country or in another country in another country altogether it's like it's going to open your eyes to how big and vast and the complex the world is and so you don't want you don't want to have blinders onto that by saying like well i had this epiphany when i was 14 years old to do whatever and I have to stick to that because I told everybody <laughs> and I wrote an essay about it <laughs> yeah. and so uh, you know be receptive but also you have to be anchored to something so I, I think you know you have to have a distinction between identity and uh, activities and you know don't change who you are in a fundamental level but also you know you can explore different careers or different types of things without changing your core beliefs and core values. That's awesome. Well, Naved, thanks for coming on the Prepped and Polished podcast, and we'd love to have you come back. Appreciate your time. Thank you. I really enjoyed coming on here. Um, talk to you soon, Alexis.
And this wraps up our show today. This was episode number 130 with Naved Rep. Ravi Kumar, the college statement guru. To connect with Naved and to work with him, check out his site, collegestatementguru.com, collegestatementguru.com. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. For another related conversation, make sure to rewind and check out episode number 72 with the essay advisors, Ellie Swartz, on how to start, write, and revise the college admissions essay. And tune in soon to hear our next podcast episode, number 131, which will be our tutoring tips episode. But to access today's episode, which was number 130, and all of our podcast episodes, just go to preptonpolish.com forward slash podcast. Thank you for joining us on the Prepton Polish podcast. Now go out there and take control of your education. You've been listening to the Prepton Polish podcast. For more information, check out preptandpolish.com. Also, you can follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Thanks for listening. Class dismissed.